Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how carbon dioxide is transported in the blood and this is for the OCR spec only. Now all cells produce carbon dioxide when they carry out aerobic respiration and I'm showing you the equation for aerobic respiration here. This carbon dioxide has to be transported in the blood from actively respiring tissues to the lungs where it's breathed out. There are three ways that carbon dioxide can be transported in the blood. Firstly, around 5% of the carbon dioxide dissolves directly into the blood plasma. Around 20% of the carbon dioxide forms a compound with haemoglobin molecules in the red blood cells. Remember that haemoglobin contains four polypeptide chains, and in each of these polypeptides, the first amino acid has a free amino group. Each of these amino groups can react with a molecule of carbon dioxide. So one molecule of haemoglobin can react with four molecules of carbon dioxide. When carbon dioxide reacts with haemoglobin, it forms the compound carbaminohemoglobin. This is a reversible reaction. When the blood passes through respiring tissue, the level of carbon dioxide is high and carbaminohemoglobin forms. However, in the lungs, the level of carbon dioxide is low and the carbaminohemoglobin breaks down, releasing carbon dioxide. So we've now seen how around 25% of the carbon dioxide is carried in the blood. The remaining 75% is transported as hydrogen carbonate ions in the blood plasma, and we're going to look at that now. I should point out that this may seem a bit tricky, but it's not as difficult as it looks. Carbon dioxide can react with water to form the compound carbonic acid, and I'm showing that reaction here. As you can see, this is a reversible reaction. Now this reaction usually takes place slowly. However, red blood cells contain an enzyme which speeds up this reaction. This enzyme is called carbonic anhydrase, and you need to learn that name. So when carbon dioxide diffuses into red blood cells, it rapidly forms carbonic acid. By converting the carbon dioxide to carbonic acid, this ensures that the level of carbon dioxide in the red blood cell is low. So this means that there's a steep concentration gradient for carbon dioxide. And because of this steep concentration gradient, there's a high rate of diffusion of carbon dioxide into the red blood cells. Now, once the carbonic acid is formed, it then dissociates or splits, forming the hydrogen carbonate ion and the hydrogen ion H+. The hydrogen carbonate ion now diffuses out of the red blood cell to the blood plasma. Now, there is a problem here. The hydrogen carbonate ion has a negative charge. When the hydrogen carbonate ion diffuses out of the red blood cell, this creates a charge imbalance. So to prevent this, as the hydrogen carbonate ion diffuses out of the red blood cell, a negative chloride ion diffuses into the red blood cell. Scientists call this the chloride shift, and this prevents a charge imbalance in the red blood cell. Now, as we said before, when carbonic acid dissociates, it also releases the hydrogen ion H+. These hydrogen ions could cause the pH of the blood to fall. However, to prevent this, the haemoglobin in red blood cells can bind to hydrogen ions, and in this way the haemoglobin is acting as a buffer. When haemoglobin binds to hydrogen ions, it forms haemoglobinic acid. OK, so as we've seen, when the level of carbon dioxide is high, for example in respiring tissue, the carbon dioxide forms carbonic acid, and then hydrogen carbonate ions. However, when the level of carbon dioxide is low, for example in the lungs, the opposite happens. In this case, the hydrogen carbonate ions diffuse back into the red blood cells in exchange for chloride ions. The hydrogen carbonate ions then combine with hydrogen ions to reform carbonic acid. At this point, the carbonic acid is broken down by carbonic anhydrase, forming carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide now diffuses out of the red blood cells and into the blood plasma. Once in the blood plasma, the carbon dioxide can be exhaled from the lungs when the blood passes through the alveoli. OK, so hopefully now you can describe how carbon dioxide is transported in the blood. 